Hi, this is Magnar, and welcome back to Magnar Plays Magnar Mod. The Let's Play meets uh, Mod Showcase meets a few little historical tidbits thrown in for good measure. We carry on our campaign with the Etruscans on the ropes, uh, back down to their very last settlement, and us about to lay waste to it with this army here. We lost our navy, unfortunately, uh, in a... In last episode's naval combat where we were outnumbered and outgunned uh, and failed as a result. Uh, it's currently winter so I don't really want to attack Alalia because there will likely be some uh, attrition which I don't really want to suffer at the moment. But I will build the auxiliary camp uh, so I can get access to the Soki units. As you can see there on the left all the different types of Soki units available with uh, this through the auxiliary building. You can see that they're all named based on uh, the different Italian peoples. So you've got the Campani, the Apuli, uh, the Latini. Um, Legio Lineata there, third from the bottom, is the uh, Samnites, uh, the Brutii, etc. There's also Etruscan units which uh, are meant to be enabled with a script, but uh, our scripts are a little buggy at the moment, so we've kind of taken them. I'm not using them in this Let's Play, and they probably aren't ready to be used yet, so we'll have to work on them a little further before they're uh, up and running again. But they will essentially unlock two additional Sokia units uh, from the Etruscan tribes once you kill the Etruscans. Okay, so that's, I'm just going to end turn. And uh, next month, I will attempt to attack Alalia here. Or well, I'll land the army preparing to attack Alalia. And so we can uh, look at other areas of expansion. I had a comment uh, um, suggest to, instead of attacking Gaul straight away, to uh, focus on Iberia. Uh, to let the, the Gauls kind of build up a bit so we can have some nice big battles with the Gauls, which I like the idea, so I'm going to follow that. But, but first I'm going to take the north of Italy um, and then push over and do some um, colonial expansion in Iberia, I guess. Well, that's the plan. doesn't always work out as planned, but uh, yeah, we'll see how far we can get with that. Okay, let's deal with our... Uh, Bad omen. A bull, random, uh, one of each, or a hundred white bulls. Let's go the balanced approach. Uh, these don't really have that much impact, I don't think. I never really bothered with them so much in uh, vanilla, because I never really noticed it that much. Um, I'm sure one of these days we'll be having to get around to overhauling the whole dilemma and uh, event areas of the game, but uh, that's not our priority at the moment. Okay, let's get some research also. So the last two we've done have been in the military line just to unlock the agents, uh, the champions, so we can get the training, and also the auxiliary camp so we can get the Sokio. And now I'm going to switch over to um, the civil side so we can get some income boosting, growth boosting, public order boosting uh, effects. Uh, I'm not really one who likes to, I don't really like to rush the, uh, the reforms. We have, we have, uh, a number of reforms for the Romans. We have here, uh, not that one, this one, the cohort organization, which uh, unlocks the Polybian, turns all the chameleon units into Polybian units. Uh, then we also have another one here for the the Marian reforms. Um, this The name has to be changed, but it's currently it's called remuneration reforms, but it's equivalently the Marian reforms, um, where you have all the cohorts reformata, uh, replacing all the Polybian units. And lastly here, we have the Augustan reforms, um, where you have all the uh, imperial cohorts and also the unlocking of all the auxilia, the, the regular auxilia, should I say. You can also notice with this tech tree that uh, the flow and the requirements of each tech level has been changed from vanilla so to that's just to slow it down a bit and to kind of time 
the research of these different reforms uh, to the actual or to a simil similar time as they would have actually been researched. I mean, you can rush it and uh, get them much earlier, but you're still going to be slowed down because in vanilla you, you only need this one to get training reforms, but here you need both naval maneuvers and manipula or manipul you know what I'm saying, manipulate organization to get uh, the training reforms. Okay, now, now that it's not winter anymore, we can bring our guys on shore. Return and next turn we'll take these guys out. So let's uh, also <laughs> do a little sabotage. I will see it done. It is done. If you look at here now, we can see that the sabotage uh, from poisoning wells has actually been reduced. The number of men killed by it is reduced uh, in this mod. I think approximately half of what vanilla should be. So you, while you can still do some damage, you're not going to be able to absolutely devastate an army with that. It's just a, like a little bit off the top, a little icing on the cake, if you will. Uh, because also we've got our research done, we can get a champion now. And with the way that with the way that uh, experience is slowed down and actually gives better, bigger benefits. Uh, I want to have a champion who is focused for training. So here we have this guy. He's more for an off offensive and doing actions. I don't want him. What's this guy got? Okay, this guy's got replenishment, upkeep, reduction, and recruitment reduction, which is great, but not quite what I'm looking for. And thirdly, that's the one. A guy with some training. So I'll grab him. And uh, when he can move next turn, I'll send him over to join the army, the main army over here. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. What do you wish of me? Skills. I, I don't need her in a... Um, she's already a fairly ag aggressive type of spy. And I've kind of gone down that line, so I'm going to continue down that line. And, yeah, get more cunning so she can kill the enemy agents. I know we all hate agent spam when the enemy sends all its agents after you and you're just getting destroyed by agents. So this spy here should be able to help stop that from happening. I'm taking it back to them. Also good to see that the Etruscans have decided finally to uh, both recruit a bigger army and also to keep it in their settlement so we can actually have a decent sized battle with the next conflict that we're going to have. Bad omen. Okay, that agricultural income is not really going to do much. Don't really have many agricultural uh, buildings. Only that one in uh, that we just built uh, recently. The growth could help a little bit though, but yeah, it's nothing too big and nothing worth really uh, putting your thinking about too much. Okay, let's uh, send him in here. <laughs> Check out what we're dealing with. Or instead, we could have a. Uh, yeah, that might be better actually. Have a, if I can still do it. Retreat, men. Retreat. Now we can have an actual land battle instead of a um, clogged up uh, bottleneck city assault. We'll have a uh, open field battle. Uh, but they outnumbered me with cavalry here, so that could be concerning. Two cavalry to one. Yeah, with tactics playing a big part, them being able to flank my army with their cavalry more than I can flank theirs uh, could play a decisive part of the battle. Also, they outnumber me. What have they got here? They've got uh, about 3,700, 3, versus we've got about 3,100. But uh, dry weather always helps. And having the... Uh, 
terrain uh, on our side is also going to be a huge advantage. Now let's set up that uh, triple axis. As I mentioned uh, last episode, I think it was, the that Terentius, the Roman playwright, indicated that uh, principes before his time were in the front with the Hastati in the second row and the Triarii behind, whereas during his time it was the other way around with Hastati in the front, principes in the second row and Triarii in the rear. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to put the principes in front. With the Hastati behind at the second row and then the Triarii in the third third row. Now the gaps here were there because they allowed the twofold, they allowed the front row to retreat uh, quite easily without um, compromising the formation of the second row. So they could just run through the gaps and also it allowed the second row to have a clear fire here onto the flanks of the enemy engaging the front row. We have fire at will for the Roman units in this mod. Uh, so it means they can actually take advantage of this kind of formation. In vanilla, of course, there is no fire at will. So they, uh, the point of being in that second row and just firing on the enemy, it doesn't really give any advantage because you have to actually charge at them in vanilla. Uh, again, I'm going to put skirmishers on the flanks because I'm going to want to try and um, push around to the sides once they engage rather than... Uh, rather than just throwing at their shields when they move towards us, but I'll put one unit at the front to slow them down and soften them up in that method. And then of course group them all together so I can move them in formation. Now most of their army is going to be coming as reserves here. Reinforcements approaching. Okay, they're coming over here. That's actually even better. I get even more of a hill on that side. And I'll just send one Triaria unit. Kind of watch out for the uh, cavalry on the left flank. Oh, hang on a sec. Uh, they're moving to a middle ground, I guess. changes things a little, so maybe just come here in the middle and uh, wait for them to form up a little bit. I'll put it into fast forward so that uh, we can get to their formation quickly, or I can just attack actually. Mm. Yeah, I'll, at I'll actually attack them. I mean, I'm meant to be attacking them, so... Still have the hill advantage, so it shouldn't be too bad. But I'll still speed it up a bit.
as I said in the last episode, there will still be some changes made to these units. Uh, we are working on them at the moment to uh, overhaul the Romans. Not overhaul, but rework what we've already done for the Romans. So expect to see some changes. Uh, the Hastati will be getting greaves. Uh, I seem to have forgotten a bit of Polybius when I started overhauling the Romans initially. So the And he mentioned that the Hastati actually wore greaves. However, the... Uh, in the time of Servius Tullius, the Hastati actually didn't wear greaves, so they'd probably go for a chameleon. Hastati where some have greaves, some haven't, and the Polybian where they all have greaves, I think will be the plan. And we're still looking at whether that's going to be one greave or two greaves, uh, depending on, yeah, we have to look at what the actual translation of that part of the text is, whether it refers to singular greave or uh, plural greaves. I've seen suggestions of both so we still have to look into that a bit more before uh, deciding on it and yes that does mean we are going to be adding a one grieve model to the game um, as along with many other models of course but that is one which we really want to have which will also be added to a lot of the Greek units as well okay they're forming up here now so I can uh, look at it a bit General is under attack. Oh, how's that possible? Okay, they're skirmish. Okay, their slingers are started already. No, I'll just bring them up here, get them to run as well. Bring these guys around on the flank. Check out what their cavalry is doing. Okay, it's right in the middle. Typical AI, keeping their general right in the middle, ready to charge probably. Flank them with some uh, javelins, some skirmishes. Same on this side as well. Actually, I think they're... What are these? These are axemen, maybe? Oh, no, spearmen. Pushing against my levies, so I'll... Uh, I might have to engage them so they don't get too far. Mm. Or I'll just come down here with one. They'll charge the other and then I can fire on behind them. Here comes the charge. Typical AI general. Charge in first. So that's why, because of that stupid behavior, we've made that the um, loss of an AI general is not as significant. Oh, I should slow it down, shouldn't I? I completely forgot all about that, sorry. <laughs> the loss of the AI general is not as significant as the loss of a human general, because we should know better. Okay, they're firing, good. What's happening over here? Okay, I'll leave them be. Check out what's happening over here. Oh, that's great. Let's get them in there. They're flanking, but I'm actually flanking them as well. And I will even get the Triarii over here to uh, lend a hand. Same with over these with these guys over here. They're almost out of ammo. We'll get ready to charge them in. On oh, these guys, probably. Get that left flank broken so he can kind of wheel around or at least try to. Yeah, your missile, your missile uh, and cavalry charges are really going to turn the battle here. I'm not so much your uh, engagements. Your engagements, uh, melee engagements, will probably last quite a while, but supported with missiles and cavalry, uh, that's when you really turn the tide. One more volley, come on.
units has used all its ammunition. Okay, they're shaking. I think they're good for a charge now. You can send them in. And they can just Order run away because they're going to get smashed if they get engaged. Oh no, away from the cavalry would be nice. Okay, they're wavering now after that charge and all the missiles on their flank. One of our units has used all its ammunition. And these guys have also got missiles coming in on their flanks. Okay, they're running. Excellent. And I need to keep running here as well. I've already engaged with them. Now oh, that sucks. Okay, well. Nothing can be done now. Actually, I can engage these guys with them and let the other ones get away. And then maybe open fire. Get some casualties on their side. Charge in. And you can help them out as well. They've broken. We'll see. They've still got quite a significant number of men left when they break. I think uh, misses on this unit as well will probably force it to break as well. Even though they've, um, as well because they've suffered much more significant casualties than the one that's already one broken. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, well, they can just go and stop them from reforming. Yeah, reforming is much easier. Uh, if I let them get away, they're just going to reform. I don't really want that to happen. Okay, come back here, and now we can uh, do some damage to these guys now that they're engaged. But they'll probably slaughter this unit here. Uh, here's one of the units which of theirs that routed earlier and has now reformed and will come and cause me some headaches, I'm sure. I guess I better use this general unit. Let's uh, firstly... bring him around to a flank and uh, try to get a decisive attack on him. Jupiter gives us strength. Now with Fire. missile units you want to be as close as you can when you're firing because uh, the the effective range of most missile units has actually been reduced in this mod um, and also their accuracy has also been reduced. Oh. So much for that idea. Back to running away I guess. Okay, General's ready to go. Send him around to the back. Oh no, not those guys. They had ammo left. Okay, this should break them. I'd imagine. Yep. As expected, they they route from a flanking maneuver. If you time it well, you don't need to have uh, multiple charges to get them to route on a on a flanking maneuver. If you time it right, of course, if they're very if they're already confident and have very high morale, then you still need to time it quite well. But uh, in such a situation as this, where they're already wavering, it only takes one hit. And they can get out of there now and come help out these guys stop them from shattering oh no even better I'll go and kill their slingers
they should be breaking any second now, I'd imagine. Get the tree area around the flank as well. Get them uh, coming in there. These skirmishers aren't going to do much. They don't even have shields. In fact, I will get them to run away. Ah, so much for that. These guys are gone now. Shattered with all their ammunition gone with them, unfortunately. Ooh, my general's in a bit of strife. I've got to get him uh, back to safety. Send him over to the Triaria, see if they can uh, deal with the enemy generals. Thankfully, the enemy generals didn't die, uh, which meant that their whole army was able to stay intact. It's going to be pretty significant. If they do... And I got rid of their uh, slingers. I'll accept that unit. Okay, now it's over, I think. The big flank's coming. I don't think they'll survive the big flank. Get these guys just to wait for the these axemen down here or spearmen down here to come up the hill. Once they come up they'll have to face some of my principes. Once I engage their general I can uh, start focusing on their slingers. As you can see, the time uh, with decent stacked armies is currently approaching about uh, 15 minutes, which is kind of what the, the goal was. That's what we were kind of aiming for. We might be able to leave those spearmen a while, so they don't. Oh, there's, I'm getting flanked now. One of our units has used all its ammunition. He's exhausted. Okay, starting a break. Getting a bit weak on the flanks. They are on the sides. Thankfully, they didn't have more uh, missile units, because then it would have been a much different result. It would probably would have been more losses and more routes on my side. Just goes to show the uh, the effect effectiveness of having missile units in this mod. There actually is a purpose, and um, yeah, maneuvering them is very important because they can still do significant amounts of death uh, of kills. The kill ratio of um, missiles isn't really reduced. I mean, armor is better at defending against missiles, so against heavy uh, units, it's better. But the uh, Sorry, against heavier units it's worse. Missiles are worse, but in general, the uh, the damage of missiles has not been tweaked anywhere near as heavily as melee. So the old hammer and anvil should still work quite effectively. Also another thing that was kind of interesting is that although one of the left flank routed originally it wasn't the whole it didn't cause the whole army to rout it only caused that portion of the flank to rout and the the middle part has actually been able to hold up still while some of them have routed it hasn't caused mass rout throughout the entire army which I like but now that the general is dead I, I think 
should almost be dead at least. Oh yeah, once they're shattered I can move on to the next group. Stop them from reforming. And I'd imagine this would uh, completely rout them, but these guys can wait for the uh, Terra Survey. I think that just means Etruscan Spearmen. And again, they've reformed, so I need to get out of there with my general. I don't want to be attacking their spearmen with him. But he can come and give second wind. This is why I wanted that uh, tactics ability, so I can give second wind. These, these triarii with the, uh, when they're exhausted. Not only does the, uh, the different levels of e exhaustion, fatigue, uh, cause greater problems for morale than in vanilla, uh, it also makes them less effective with regards to attack, defense, and all that kind of stuff. So having that second win ability and being able to use it on your important units is very handy to have. Completely oblivious to my general being <laughs> attacked by the spearmen. The Etruscans, as you can see, have axemen as well. A number of axes were, were found, uh, like in Etruscan tombs and such. Um, that's why we've added an axe unit for the Etruscans. It seems to indi be indications that they actually use them in battle. Whether that was only as a secondary weapon or not, I'm not sure, but eh, why not have a bit of variety? I'm not going to let them regroup, that's for sure. Okay, a much bigger uh, route has now started. Not that those uh, skirmishes are going to do anything, but just bring him in in case uh, another army routes near them and they uh, end up losing a lot of them. And then in the next uh, engagement, we won't have as many uh, skirmishes. Again, a well timed uh, attack on the flank has resulted in them routing and the other one yep both of them just routed I think yeah that's it enough of them were killed to uh, cause a significant morale shock to get a decisive victory excellent about two-third losses for the enemy so it's um, Probably not as many as you're used to with vanilla if you've been playing that. But still a fair bit more than what would be in real li real life and uh, well, historically would have occurred in such battles. Still got to find the, the middle ground, I guess. Also got some nice experience here for this unit here, this Principes which is always nice to have. Uh, I'll kill them, just in case they want to come back and fight in the next battle. And lastly, I don't think there's much left of the uh, Etruscans now, so when I assault that, yeah, they're all pretty much 
empty. I'm not going to fight that battle. I'll automate that, and uh, I think that'll be it for this episode. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.